Hi, my stitching friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May, and this is my channel, Art of Design, where we celebrate counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, making all the things, and of course now, punch needle. <laughs> this is a special episode today because I am reviewing the new thread by Sulky. It's called the Fillion or Feline. It's not Feline. I want to call it Feline. <laughs> F-I-L-A-I-N-E. And it's their 12 weight, 100% acrylic thread. I am so excited to share my thoughts and some of my projects that I have done with all of you. I, oh my gosh, this is going to be really cool. I have my camera set up. Oh, excuse me. Didn't mean to bump you there. And I'm going to show you a bunch of the different things that I did and talk about this thread and my pros and cons of it and show you. So I did a punch needle. I've done some cross stitch, some freehand embroidery, and some adaptation of a Berlin wool work. I am explicitly discussing today using this thread for handwork. So this right here is obviously on a 475 yard spool for a sewing machine, but I used it for handwork and that all using my hands or the punch needle like this. I have a current project that I'm working on in punch needle. And the punch needle here, I'm using some of the here, and I'm using the punch needle. I am super excited about this new thread. I want to say that Sulky did send me these threads to review, and I'm not being paid for this review. I am putting this out because I am really excited about this product. So all the opinions are my own. All the work is my own, all my own stitching. <laughs> so I want to get started by talking about this. I originally, when I was on the Sulky website, I saw that they had a new fuzzy style thread and I got so excited and I immediately said, I want to try it out. So I reached out to Ellen March. She is the director of content for Sulky of America. And I kind of gave her like, hey, can you, you know, what, what's going on with your new, with your new thread? And she, she offered to send, to send me a couple spools to try. Cause I told her, I said, flat out, I am super interested in this as a substitute for the thread to use like whisper thread or to use it. I don't know, for that fluffy texture. So with that in mind, I want to show you the very first thing that I stitched when I got this in the mail. I stitched the top here and I stitched two different ones. Can you tell which one is done in wool and which one is done in the acrylic? Okay, I want to say huge shout out to The Gentle Art. They sent me this wool a couple years ago, I signed up as one of their new designers and they sent me this to try. So I I pulled out this and then this. So what, the top and the bottom, which one's which? Oh, and if you hear my kids in the background, sorry. <laughs> There's pugs, kids, lawnmowers going off. All right, so the two. Well, the top one is wool. And the second one is the new acrylic. Very, almost indistinguishable. I am super excited about this. So that was the very first project that I worked on. And I, I by then I went, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So the second thing I decided to work on was some freehand embroidery projects. This, I had no pattern but I grabbed a piece of 18 count Ada. And in hindsight, I would have grabbed a 14 count. And I say that because I started stitching this in cross stitch. And I found that the one strand of 
the acrylic thread, the 12 weight on 18 count was way too bulky. As you can see here, I started doing cross stitch. So my review is definitely, if you want to use this, I would have, I would do at least a 16 count Ada or 14 count. I would not do an 18 count Ada. It's just too bulky. So I wanted to try some other stitches and knots. I did the Rhodes heart stitch here. I wanted to try some colonial knots and then some just long stitches for the basket. And I'm really happy with how that the look turned out. One strand of that yellow. All of this is done with one strand. My review is doing colonial knots is not really good with this thread. The knotting, it literally, it, it knots on itself. So I, I had a really hard time. So I would say if you are going to be doing any of the knots, French knots or otherwise, I would do it with the regular 12 weight rather than like the 12 weight cotton rather rather than the acrylic thread. I wanted to show here too. I wanted to just see what the bulky if maybe I mixed my stitches and added a couple extra strands and oh my goodness, hot mess. But I think that's more indicative of the fabric choice, not necessarily the thread itself. So that was the second project that I did. Just a freehand. I wanted to see what the white looked like for with long stitches and then how it would look to overlap. Um, this is, I did large uh, two over two on the Ada and then tried to do some work over the top, just freehand, no plan. So there we go. There's my first little, little project with it. And then I'm super excited about this witch here and I'm gonna show you this witch. I will say that this is a pattern by Birds of a Feather and it's called Remember Me. So this is not my original work. I am working off the pattern here and it's the witch part right here. And this is the fun stuff I'm gonna show you. So this is on a 14 count Ada that I hand dyed myself. And I wanted to show you that all of this is stitched with cotton, the cotton sulky, with the exception of the cat. The cat is stitched with the acrylic filian, or filiane. I've been saying it wrong. So for the re remainder of the video, I'm just gonna say the, acry the new acrylic thread. Oh, and there's a pug hair. I'm a maker and a pug owner, right? So here, this is the one, one strand of the acrylic. This is two strands of the cotton on 14 count. And then this is one strand of that same cotton. So two strands here on the hat, one strand on the dress. You can see the difference in the thickness. And then here is the acrylic. And it does have a bit of a fuzz to it. I'm really excited. So I wanted to just show you side by side here. This is a well-loved spool, <laughs> a little worse for wear. Uh, but this is the cotton that I used, two strands, one strand. And then the one strand is this spool, which is the three, six, three, five. So it's not, it's not the char, it's not black, black. It's like the charcoal equivalent of the cotton. And I just wanted to show you, I learned from Sulky that they're also looking at coming out with the petite spools of this thread and um, in 2021. So, this right now, they primarily have the 475 and they're going to be coming out with the 50, like the, like the cotton petites um, early next year. So they sent me a couple of samples of the small weight. They debuted it originally this year, I guess the 2020 Nashville Needlework Market. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I wanted to show you that this is integrating the acrylic with an existing pattern because it's got that fluff and I, I love the coverage that it gave me on the 14 count Ada. So I'm really excited about that. The next project that I worked on was on this piece of linen. This is a piece of uneven weave linen. It, it came out of a sampler pack that I 
took apart that I got um, you know, when the upholstery industry has like the sampler packs. This was the linen I, I stitched down the sides, but this is the motif that I, the two sampler motifs I wanted to try out. Again, this is on an uneven weave. It's like a 20, 26. So not terribly uneven, but uneven nonetheless. These are using all of these colors. I used the pink, this like white, the charcoal black. So these two, you're probably wondering like, well, that's kind of random. One tassel and a rose or a flower, a fuchsia flower, where'd you get that from? Well, I'm so happy that you asked. <laughs> I actually purchased an historic wool work 19, 1840s sampler and it goes, it continues on. But for the purposes of this video, I just wanted to show you that I wanted to do an adaptation of these two pieces here. So I went ahead and stitched them. I worked with the colors that I had, so they're not an exact replica, but this is wool and this is the acrylic. Again, different counts of fabric, different colors of fabric, obviously different ages of fabric and conditions but I just wanted to show you that I feel like I was able to kind of replicate the look of the wool. Here, I'm trying to get a close up for you so you can see that kind of fuzzy wool look. I, I tried really hard to replicate that with this new th acrylic thread. So again, this is handwork. This is my take on <laughs> uh, historic Berlin work or wool work sampler. I am super excited because I actually have a sensitivity to wool. So the idea of being able to use this as a substitute so I can do like wool work, but with acrylic, really, it's got my, it's got me really excited. All right. I want to show you my last little thing here. And this is my own design that I did. And I wanted to try out the acrylic for punch needle. The only thing that I did not use acrylic on is the lining of the petals is done in a cotton, the cotton uh, 1024 sulky, but the remainder of this is done in the acrylic. And the cotton I did up on, a, on the second setting where the rest of it is down on the first setting. So what I mean by that is, so I did all of the acrylic at one, but I did the cotton at two, so it's up a little higher. And this is a pattern that I created. It fits inside of a ceramic coaster that I got in my effort of sustainable stitching. What I really like about this is it's got that, it, it's got that really cool kind of shag look to it. I thought it was really neat. So there we go. In the center of the flower, I feel that's what the the charcoal black and the brown it gives it some good dimension since these are not very the acrylics are not variegated so just you wanting to achieve that effect with how you use your punch needle so very excited this fit on I will say so my punch needle it fit I did it at setting number one with one strand with the smallest needle attachment if that helps anyone. And what I love about this new punch, about punch needle with this is it's already on a really convenient strand. So I can just unroll and, and, and work my design as long as I need until I'm done. And then I can just clip the spool. So if you are a punch needler, these huge spool, spools are absolutely fantastic. And I super recommend them. If you are not a punch needler and you are doing counted cross stitch or embroidery work, I, you know, the smaller, you could wait for the smaller ones to come out or, you know, you can get the big ones and share with friends, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I wanted to show you my last little thing is I grabbed, and where did I put it? I grabbed the tiniest little remnant piece of linen that I could find. Where did I put you? And I made a little design. Here it is. I 
literally have this like piece of linen here, <laughs> just little remnant pieces. And I can't bear to throw anything away. And I thought I would try to make, do some long stitches with the wool. I tried to do a fancy side stitch, but again, I was not happy doing any type of, this is just a, a really wonky whip stitch. I tried to do a fancier stitch and it knotted up really quickly. So anything where you're making loops or knots, not good for. So here I did some long stitches with the cream and then that red. And the one, this is, so I would say this is just freehand embroidery. And I wanted to do this on camera because I thought it would be super fun. I have a brand new toothbrush, never been opened. I want to show you all, it's clean. So crinkle, crinkle. I'm open, I just opened it up. And here live, we are going to brush his beard and get it to come out, hopefully a little shaggy. So this is again, to try to mimic the whisper effect. I did not do a whole lot of stitches, so I'm not sure how we might be able to get this going, but I'm intentionally trying to disrupt the fibers here to make his beard intentionally wispy. So the idea with this is that if you're maybe stitching freehand embroidered animals or, you know, doing your Jolly July, your Santa stitching, that it instead of using whisper, you can use this acrylic. I I'm super excited about this product. It's, they said it's made in Italy. So Sulky of America imports it. And oh, there, that looks really cool. So I think if I worked on it a little longer, I could get it really looking wispy. But for a few minutes that, that turned out really nice. So I could turn this into a little gift tag or a little, a little prim, primsical ornament. I could finish him off with um, maybe give him an actual body and not just a free floating head. But using your little toothbrush, I, I do know that there are some beautiful machine embroidery and uh, quilters that are using this thread. And again, for the purposes of this video, I'm just talking about handwork. So I'm again, super excited about this. I'm gonna have a blog post with my link to Sulky. I'll have that linked below. If you decide to try these after watching this video, I'd love a comment. I'd love it if you liked and subscribed to my channel. If you don't know already, I did an intro to cross stitch for Sulky and that is in my playlist, my tutorials playlist. And that was sponsored by Sulky. This is Amanda May of Art Design, and I am just so excited to, to, to talk about this 12 weight acrylic thread. I hope that you have a beautiful time stitching and making all the things. Take care, my friends.